I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're going to be talking about differentiation and breakups. One of those big psychological terms that we throw out there for you guys sometimes. This one is surprisingly a big cause of a lot of breakups. Yes, it really is. And a lot of other problems too. Mm -hmm. And Margaret has extensive experience on this topic. So she's going to lead our discussion on what it is, and she's got an interesting article that she found that she wanted to share. Yes. Um, now, the idea of separating and differentiating yourself from your family of origin has been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. And it was talked about a great... Since the Middle Ages, since right? Since the Middle Ages. When Margaret was only 600. Yes. Um, so when we were coming out of the Middle Ages, like in the late 60s, early 70s, into the early 80s. This was a big deal topic. And then it suddenly seemed to disappear and no one talks about it anymore, mm -hmm. except for me. And if you've listened to much of our stuff, you know it's one of my all-time favorite subjects. Now, I was reading material by a man named Dr. Robert Firestone, and his daughter, I have shared... I've shared some of her articles with you before. She talks about how not to put yourself down mm -hmm. in some very nice ways. So even though they're writing together, I think she's differentiated healthily from him. I was wondering that myself. Yes, of course you were. <laughs> so let me go on a bit about it. Um, what he really has to say is in order for people to live their own lives and fulfill their destinies, they must differentiate from destructive environmental influences. And most unfortunately, a family can sometimes be a destructive influence. Not that they mean to be, but they are. Yeah. All right. Dr. Firestone believes that a person's true identity is affected throughout their lives by interpersonal experience that either support or damage the development of his or her personality. In order for us to live our own lives and fulfill our own destinies, we must differentiate ourselves from destructive family and societal influences. Differentiating from negative influence and identities from our past allows us to become who we truly are, rather than following a prescribed identity for, from either our family or our society. All the men in my family have been the rough, tough type, and they never share feelings, and they get really mad. Well, you can be like that if you choose to, or you can change your mind and do something altogether different, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so your heritage is not necessarily your destiny. We do have choices here. Um, Differentiating from negative influences and identities from our past allows us to become who we truly are rather than following a prescribed identity from either our family or our society. Mm -hmm. Okay. To the extent that we are able to develop and sustain our own unique identities and follow our own unique desires, we will be able to truly lead fulfilling lives. So, you should ask yourself, Whose life am I really living? Mm -hmm. Okay? And am I basing my life on my own personal beliefs, values, and desires? Wow. Say that again. Okay. Say both of those again. Okay. So you should ask yourself, whose life am I really living? And that goes for your partner, too. Yes, Or it your does. ex. Oh, absolutely. And when you're looking at somebody seriously for a lifetime commitment, 
I keep saying to people, one of the first things you want to do is figure out their level of differentiation. Mm -hmm. Are they going when you have when there are grandchildren, are they going to be able to tell their parents, no, you're not interfering, and yes, they're going to school where we choose, not where you think is the best place. Yeah. Not that you have to do that in a hurtful way, but you do have to make your own decisions. And in some families, it's a huge struggle. Okay? And it's not an easy thing to do. By understanding the project of differentiation, we can more fully become the unique individual that we have the potential to be. By understanding the process, we can begin to separate ourselves from the chains of the past and lead the most individualistic and meaningful lives possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, four steps in differentiation. Okay. Step one. The first step of psychological differentiation involves breaking with destructive thoughts and attitudes towards ourselves that we internalize based on painful early life experiences. And his daughter writes about this. Um, and, and I did share an article before where she was advising us not to talk bad to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. We start by identifying these negative thought processes, which Dr. Firestein calls the critical inner voice, that are harmful or negative toward the self. If you make a mistake, you say to yourself, you're so stupid, you always manage to, to mess things up. Yeah. Those things have to go if you're going to really differentiate. Um, some of these thoughts may because, seem... Because, why do you think that is? Because we're hearing our parents' voice? Yes, because we hear our parents' voice. And if there's anything that totally amazes me after 30 odd years of doing this, it's the power of parents' words to us. Whatever they say when we're little, we believe. You'll never amount to anything. You know, you're a terrible child, um, you're very impulsive, you always make the wrong decision, all those things. Yep. Stay with us and stay with us. And the parent may have said it one day when they were sick or angry or something, but we Tired. have it for years. Yeah. yeah. Got it. So you got to become aware of those. <clears throat> um, the critical inner voice, they're harmful and they're negative and they say mean things to us. Some may seem positive at first while others will seem hostile, self-hating, paranoid, or suspicious. Once we become aware of these voices, we can develop insight into the sources of these destructive thoughts. We can develop this insight by thinking about which specific individuals or experiences may have led us to feel these negative ways about ourselves. I had a, one, a talk with a woman a few weeks ago who gave me a very dramatic description of when she was a little kid uh, back in the dark ages when they used to deliver milk to the door. Mm -hmm. She wanted milk one morning and I don't think mom was up yet. So she went to the back porch and she took in a glass bottle of milk, which being a kid, she dropped. And she was persecuted for that for years. Wow. To the point where she had to, has, still has to remind herself daily that spilling the milk was nothing of the caliber that she heard about for years after that. Yeah. Yep. Um, she was able to pinpoint it. Sometimes it's not that easy, but sometimes we can. She should go visit her mother and drop milk on her head in the nursing home. I, I had that same <laughs> thought. Um, <laughs> um, and I don't know if she could have tolerated that, but she was working on being a little bit angry at mom. Uh, but that's exactly your thought. Um, and we can almost develop, not like psychotic voices, but voices that keep reminding us of the things we have done wrong. Yeah. Um, so if we listen to our inner voice and listen to the times when you say, Oh, stupid, you can't tell me you made that mistake again. Um, it's very important to listen to those things because those are the areas we have to look at. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's step one. You want to become aware of the things that you're still beating yourself up for. Or you've picked up where the parent left off beating you up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, step two. The second step of differentiation involves recognizing and changing negative personality traits in ourselves that are an incorporation of the negative traits of our parents, caregivers, and other influential figures. Okay. Many individuals are surprised to find that despite their best intentions, they often act the same negative ways their parents did. 
Yes, that's big. <laughs> Reenacting the very actions or personality patterns that they swore they would never repeat themselves. Mm -hmm. Altering these unpleasant or toxic personality characteristics, addictions, vanity, phoniness, self-centeredness, a victim orientation toward life, Attitudes, could be anything. Yeah, yeah. Superiority or contempt of other people, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, those are all things that we need to look at. If we choose to be like that, it's one thing. But if we just sort of inherited it, um, you know. I was looking, at, I love to look at the t-shirts the and the catalogs that have wiseacre sayings on them. And there's one that says, I opened my mouth and my mother came out. <laughs> now, I mean, that could be a good thing or a bad thing, but you know the suggestion is that it's a bad thing, <laughs> okay? Um, and sometimes people will bring themselves, oh my God, I'm acting just like my mother, or I'm acting just like my father, or my crazy aunt. Do you Susan. ever oh, yes. you see that? In well, um, yeah, I think not long ago I responded to something in the way my father would have, and it was kind of self-righteous, and I thought, oh my God, how judgmental of you, Margaret. <laughs> yeah. I'll catch myself doing things too, or thinking things, or even sometimes the way I laugh at something, I'm like, oh my gosh, you sound just like my dad. Is my dad here? Oh, right, right. <laughs> yeah, you kind of look around and say, are they still here? Wait a minute, what is Whoa, this? what yeah. is that? <laughs> yeah. Um, so we all do it. The trick is to be aware of it, because some things we choose to inherit from our parents, both of my parents had wonderful qualities. They also had qualities I don't want at all. Mm -hmm. um, so you got to make a decision which ones you like and which ones you don't. It's kind of like the cafeteria plan, you know? You choose the ones you want. Yeah. And it feels good when you realize what you want to change and that you re remember that you can do it, because you have perfect choice in who you want to be mm -hmm. and what you want to be like. If we were rejected as kids, we may feel distrusting in our relationships. People tend to cling to these defended ways of responding to others and remain emotionally trapped in cycles from the past. Mm -hmm. I think immediately about avoidant people mm -hmm. who gave up trusting pretty early on and are still very cautious and very suspicious and, and never sure. As adults, it's important to give up the hope of ever filling the vast voids we felt as children. In order to become psychologically differentiated, we need to, in effect, say goodbye to our child selves and live fully as adults, as the adults we are now. That's easier said than done, um, but that's the goal, is that we can remain in an adult state all of the time. All right. Not easy, Not especially easy. when you're tired. If you're tired or, or you're hungry or there's something else going on in your life or it's the holidays, you know, the stress. all kinds of things. Um, but you do want to be you. You don't be, want to be your mom and your dad, although you will take traits from them. Sure. Okay. Um, so step four, um, developing your own values, ideals, and beliefs. That's big. And that's extremely important, okay? Um, rather than automatically accepting the beliefs that we grew up with, or those of our culture, we should strive to lead a life of integrity according to our own ideals, in spite of social pressure, pressures to conform to the standards of others. We should resist influences that are oppressive or restrictive of individual human rights. It is also important to formulate transcendent goals, those that go beyond ourselves and our immediate family, and to take steps toward fulfilling those goals that give personal meaning to our lives. Yeah. In other words, we want to give something back. But you do want to be your own person, but it is a terrible struggle. I, I was an only child, as were you. Mm -hmm. And it was extremely difficult. I threatened to apply to the University of Mars, I think, at one point. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't sure that was far enough away. <laughs> okay? Um, and, you know, some people grow up in more powerful families than others. And, but I talk with people and sometimes I suggest this or that. And they say, well, I don't know that my family could handle that. Well, you're a grown-up and they have to handle that. That's right. They don't... And, and people can get caught with... If I really do become my own self, will my family still love me? Yes, they will. 
They might cut you off for a period. They might be very upset. Try and manipulate you. Try and manipulate you. Try and pull you back to where you were. Get you. Right. But if you can stand your ground and say, you know, I love you still. If you don't love me anymore, then there that is. There's much I can do about it. Then they can't control you. Then they can't control you. Exactly. But this is who I am. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want me to come for dinner, I'm coming as myself. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And it's funny because, well, it's not funny, but I can think of people off the top of my head that, you know, couldn't come out of the closet. Right. Oh, sure. That's a huge one. Yeah. I'll never, I've heard somebody recently say, I'll never come out to my family. They said, I'll never do it. And so it was basically the partner was in a position of either I'm okay with them not coming out or I stay with them and they don't come out. And that would be pretty heavy, that would be pretty heavy duty for a partner who was more differentiated. Yep. And say, I'm not living in the closet all your life because you can't tell your mother. As a matter of fact, I just thought of it, but I think you talked to that girl today. Yes. Oh, did I? Yes. Yeah. Did you talk to a lesbian today? No, not, not that I was aware of. In any case, but I think I do know who you mean. Okay. Yes, I do know who you mean. And yeah, you can't do that stuff. If you want to be your own person, you know, I'm sorry you're upset, but I have to be who I am. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't mean I don't love you because that's the guilt trip. Yeah. Um, if well, I have one girl who was told the mother would have preferred that she OD'd on drugs to be a lesbian, to being a lesbian. In other words, I would have preferred that you kill yourself. I, maybe we're thinking of the same girl. We may be. <laughs> um, in any case, you can't do that. You can't let anybody hold you hostage like that. Yes. And you have a right to have your own beliefs and, you know, your own principles and your own ethics. Um, and, you know, Shakespeare, to thine own self be true. And it follows as the night, the day, you cannot then be false to anyone. You have to be your own self and the rest will follow. Okay. But oftentimes it's a profile in courage to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Really is. It really is. And the thing is, parents and families don't mean to be destructive, but the minute you change and the minute you become uncontrollable, they have fears that they're going to lose you. Okay. My becoming my own self and disagreeing with me doesn't mean you're going to lose me. And I never said I was leaving you. Right. I only said I was going to be me. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very important that both you and your partners are their own people and not um, strung along by family members and, right. you know, used, manipulated, guilted into being who they want them to be right. because then they won't really be in charge of their own life. They won't be in charge of their own lives. And they'll be in charge of your life. Well, they'll try very hard to be in charge of your life. Yeah. And that is really one of the major assessments you want to do with any partner. How differentiated are they? And the quickest way to figure that out is to say, do they make their own personal life decisions? I went to this college. I really wanted to go to such and such a place, but my father didn't want me to go. So I went where he said, okay, mm -hmm. decision you made at the time. I hope you wouldn't make it now. Mm. You know, very, very important topic. And hopefully this one was helpful to you guys. Make sure you give Margaret a thumbs up on this video for her research on it. Um, if you are experiencing anything like that in your relationship and you're seeing those patterns, I highly recommend you do a Skype with Margaret. And you know, the other thing is, we think about people doing this as adolescents or young adults. Many people never do it at all. If you get around to it at 52, good for you. Mm -hmm. Whenever you do it is when you do it and it's a wonderful time to do it, mm -hmm. okay? Okay, so if you wanna get our help personally, just go to my website, askcraig.net, sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coachings and I do Skype. Margaret is available for Skype coaching. I'd love to hear from you. Please feel free to call me. This is a subject she knows a lot about. And so if you sense anything going on like that, I highly recommend doing a call with Margaret. Okay. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon.